Hello, everyone, and welcome to Northern Spotlights, the show that talks about how we are taking all of you to the north with the Vancouver Aquarium. I am today's host. My name is Amanda, and joining me, we have Anna Juarez, who is one of our Hello. marine mammal trainers here at the Vancouver Aquarium. So thank you so much for joining us, Anna. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, Anna has been a trainer for over 10 years, and it's pretty amazing when you think about all the animals that she has worked with. She's worked with macaws, with tigers, with manatees, dolphins, sharks, stingrays, sea lions, and of course, belugas. Yes. Very impressive. <laughs> but I, well, you have actually told me that being a trainer wasn't something that you thought you would do when you were younger. So what is it that you thought you were going to do? Yeah, so when I was young, I wasn't actually looking forward to be a trainer. That's nothing, like, that's not something I was, you know, wishing for. I never passed through my head that that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life or pursuing as a career. So actually what I wanted to do would be like a DJ radio station, something like that. I was really into music, learning to play some uh, instrumental music uh, th and things like that, but never, never passed through my head that I was actually going to work with cetaceans or marine mammals. So how did you go from wanting a career in music to training animals? So it's not that I ambitioned to be a trainer back then, but I always have enjoyed the ocean and I have always mm. enjoyed the animals. And, you know, I own uh, pets and have dogs at, at my house. So I'm being an, an animal person all my life. So one day I got a job on an amusement park in Mexico City and they happened to house two belugas in that place. So I showed my interest of looking at, go watching the shows that they were doing, look what they were doing with the belugas, with the sea lions. And eventually I got really lucky that they were actually looking for a person to join their team and I happened to be the lucky, lucky person to get the position there. Uh, my position there was pretty much just be an apprentice learn how to make the buckets ready for the trainers, you know, learn how to assist them during the shows, uh, do the talking part during the shows. And that was my job, just making sure that the trainers have it what they needed to be able to do their job. That's how I started. Wow, so field. really starting at the bottom and then yeah. making your way up over the years. Yes. So once you got to start working with the animals, what was the first animal you got to work with? So I was really lucky to work with the belugas. That was the first animal I was actually able to work for the first time as an assistant trainer back there. That's what I was doing mm -hmm. uh, with the belugas. Yeah, belugas and then at this pretty much at the same time with sea lions, assisting the other trainers. That's great. And yeah. this was down in Mexico City. This was in Mexico City. All right. Yes. So there's, there were belugas <laughs> back then. And uh, since then, of course, I've mentioned you got a chance to work with many different type of animals. So do you have a favorite animal that you've gotten to work with? Every single animal that I've been working with, I have learned something from them. That's for sure. But uh, after I uh, finished working with the belugas in Mexico City and with the sea lions, I got very lucky to move to the Mexican Caribbean and get to work with manatees. And that to me was like, like a breaking point in my career because I was able to apply everything that I learned from other trainers in Mexico City now uh, with the manatees. So it's like, to me, was like the beginning of me being a trainer working with the manatees. And so. do, you, do you have any special moments as a trainer that stand out for you, maybe working with the manatees? I mean, the manatees teach me a lot, teach me a lot of patience. They are so gentle, you know, that I was able to start really slow with the training. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, the opportunity that I have with the manatee was just just a really learning, good learning experience for me. Yeah. Um, any interactions with any of the animals that have been kind of memorable for you? Uh, that, I, that is one that I always like to, to tell people about, and this is actually with two of our sea otters here at the Vancouver Aquarium. Uh, Tanu, uh, she was playing one of the toys that we provide her with some shrimp inside. So she needed to find a way to get that shrimp inside of the bowl. And Tanu was playing with it, and she was just shaking it and eventually getting the shrimp out of those bowls. But then instead of her eating it or putting it in her pocket for later, she was just placing it on one of the hallowed areas that they have. So Elfin, the other sea otter that is here with us, was coming right behind Tanu without her looking at him, and he was just taking that shrimp from her and eating it. So Tanu was working so hard on taking that shrimp out of that bowl, but Elfin was actually eating it. So it was quite funny, and seeing Tanu learning, you know, how to play with those toys, how to deal with Elfin as well. So when they ended up giving them, both of them, a handful of shrimp, and they will end up well. But that was a funny <laughs> experience to see Tanu 
playing like that with Delphine. Oh, I can only imagine that would be hilarious. Yeah. And I'm sure as a trainer, like you have days filled with moments like that. So yes. it can be really quite special to, of course, build those bonds and those relationships with those animals but I know being a trainer is probably not all fun and games <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> could you maybe describe a typical day of what it's like to be a trainer yeah so every day as I was telling you guys a little bit something early it's we just need to make uh, the fish buckets for our animals first right the first thing we come in here to do so the fish is pretty much frozen in the morning we have to sort it out so fish by fish every single fish that goes into the animals bucket has to be inspected by a trainer mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that it's in nice quality in good condition to make their way to the bucket. Once in the bucket, is good for the animals to eat, but it's a long process, you know, like just to give you guys an example, a beluga can eat up to 16 kilos a day, wow. and that's just only one animal, right? The sea otters also eat a lot, so we have to do a lot of work on the kitchen every single morning. We also do lots of cleaning, you know, scrubbing rocks all day long sometimes, uh, power washing habitats. My favorite part, honestly, is uh, if I'm going to have to scrub something, I'd rather do it under the water with a scuba tank on. I'd rather do those dives and, and clean the habitats that way, which I think is a lucky part of my job as well, being able to jump into the animal's habitat and clean and, and do some scuba diving with them. It's pretty awesome for me. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, you've had gained a lot of experience as a trainer working in Mexico City, working in the Caribbean, and of course now here at the Vancouver Aquarium. So how would you say that your experiences have changed over the years being a trainer? Yeah, so when I started working on this field 10 plus years ago, uh, we, the field seemed to be really or strongly focused on entertainment. You know, we were just doing shows with the belugas back then when I started, and then we were just doing interactive programs when I moved to the Caribbean. But now I'm working in the Vancouver Aquarium, and we are strongly focused on research, conservation, mm. and education. Our number one priority is, of course, our animals' health care. So our, the husbandry behaviors that we train with them, it's the most important part of our day here, to make sure that we ask those husbandry behaviors that are really strong. So that way that the, the field has changed to me. I think it's really important for people to know how we went from being so uh, focused on entertainment to now just focus mm. and, on the conservation, education part of our field, making sure that our animals are nice and healthy and that those husbandry behaviors are uh, really strong as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say that's a huge part, I guess, of working at the Vancouver Aquarium, of course, the animal health care, allowing us to learn ab about them. And you did mention research. Um, can you tell us about some of the research that is being done with the belugas? Yeah, so the belugas are being participated in several research projects already. The latest one that we did, or that I can remember, is a pulmonary research study. Okay. So researchers were trying to gather uh, data, of a baseline data of the function and uh, met and mechanics of the lungs of the cetaceans. Oh. So they needed uh, healthy cetaceans to participate in the research, so the belugas were invited. And what we were asked to do is pretty much just to ask the belugas to sit in a certain position for about 10 minutes at a time, and that you guys probably are watching a, a picture of it. And then uh, we were placing a flow meter on their blowhole, and they just needed to sit there for about 10 minutes and just respirate like normally, so the researcher can gather the data that they needed from their respirations. So you're just simply asking them to breathe. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I guess uh, training has a really big part in this, asking them to do these behaviors? Yeah, so the husbandry behaviors are really important, not only to make sure that our belugas are nice and healthy, but they allow us also to participate in this uh, meaningful research project that can help us to understand these animals a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us um, some other behaviors that you're able to train the belugas to do for healthcare and for research? Yeah, so they are trained already for a chuff behavior, which is a sneeze or a cough okay. <laughs> uh, from a beluga. So by asking them those chaws from their block, we can collect uh, samples. And those samples can be used also for uh, helping researchers. That not too long ago, we were able to collect some samples from a researcher that wanted to see if she can actually read uh, some hormone samples from the blowhole, oh. from the blowhole samples. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> now, we actually have a question from somebody in the audience, Angela from Vancouver. And she wants to know, what's the most challenging aspect of training? I think patience. Like, mm. you, know, you have to be really patient to work with the animals, to get to know them, to build a relationship. 
It may look fun to be able to train a leap or a high energy behavior, but at the end of the day, if you're not really patient with them and you don't get to know them before moving that forward with them, that you, you are not gonna gain a lot. So mm -hmm. you have to be really patient. And I, that's something that I've been learning during my career, to be patient with them, and not only with the animals, with everybody around us. It's really helpful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm curious, is there anybody in the audience that's you know, maybe an aspiring trainer? They want to be a trainer one day. <laughs> I see a couple smiles, maybe a couple hands. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot of work that goes into it, but I'm sure building those relationships with those animals is probably rewarding. Yeah, it's very rewarding, you know? Like, you have to spend a lot of time here. You have to make a lot of fish with buckets and you have to spend a lot of time even just watching them. Mm. Uh, but it's very rewarding. Like once you can get close to them, get to don't know them, do those body exams on them and, and, and see how the animals respond to, you, to your hand signals and all that, it's, it's very rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. If you had any advice to give anybody in the audience or at home about if they wanted to be a trainer, what would you tell them to do? Yeah, if that's something that you actually want to do and want to be a trainer, I can tell you it's a very rewarding job. It's a lot of hard work but the amount of time that you spend with the animals, taking care of them, it's very, very rewarding. If you really care about the animals, you're going to stay here taking care of them, making sure you know them well. So yeah, if you want to be a trainer, pursue the career. It's a very rewarding career for sure. For sure. Yeah. And for you, do you have um, anything that's coming next? Are you involved in any uh, further research projects with the animals? Yeah, so here at the Vancouver Aquarium, I'm looking forward to keep participating in those research projects. Uh, hopefully, we are working on one, uh, trying to see how the uh, belugas utilize their habitats mm. and, you know, keep working on those research projects, keep building more relationships with them, uh, keep uh, training some more husbandry behaviors, you know, keep moving forward so we can, the field can keep improving and the of the animals here at the Vancouver Aquarium. And for people at home or here, are they able to see some of this research and progress? Yeah, I mean, here at the Vancouver Aquarium, we do sessions every single day. If you come over and join us for a day at the Vancouver Aquarium, it's very possible that you're going to be able to see us as a trainer going in the water, uh, putting a vest on a beluga, and now putting vests on the belugas for research or just uh, doing training sessions with them, teaching the belugas new behaviors every single day. That's really wonderful. Well, it's exciting to know that there's so much that we're learning about these animals, the belugas, and others that we have here at the Vancouver Aquarium. And uh, thank you for being a part of this amazing amazing research and allowing us to learn more about them and I look forward to hearing about how these uh, research projects go and everything with that but that does come to the end of our talk show today our northern spotlight so thank you so much Anna for joining us thank and uh, if anybody else is interested in finding out more about uh, what we do here our commitments up north I encourage you to visit our website vanaqua.org slash our north you can see how we are pretty active up there and if you want to see the next show we'll be taking place place on Saturday, November 7th at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So thank you so much again. My name is Amanda, and thank you for watching.